Hello, I'm Lee, I'm an intuitive, and every month I take the pulse on what might be showing up for you energetically, psychologically, emotionally. Just a few of the themes for the April 2024 energy update are a world of extremes and dark versus light, the soul is sovereign, community is gold, and the power of the pause. So stay tuned for the full update and all of the themes for this month. Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for April 2024. It's interesting, this month I got a general heading for uh, all of these themes that I've been given intuitively this morning. The Storm of Transformation we are in a storm of transformation. And I think often we think of a storm in a trepidatious way or a way that can bring fear or concern. And I certainly think that a lot of what we're going through right now has that character for each of us on different days or in different moments. But the storm is also an energy that really brings a clearing and a change and releases pressure atmospherically. So the storm of transformation can be viewed in two different ways. And probably for many of us, we're viewing it in different ways at different moments as we're navigating it, depending on what we're dealing with. But I think remembering that we as a world are in a storm of transformation can be helpful when the sensitive side of you or the uh, more logical, more grounded side of you that's perhaps having trouble being logical or grounded because of how much is spinning in the world, it can really help you to remember what we're in. So I've received several different themes that I'm going to deliver and elaborate on. And the first one won't surprise many of you. The first theme for April is the world of extremes, world of extremes. So this relates to dark versus light. And this theme is bringing both global and personal healing. So I think many of us are aware if you want to look at what's going on globally, you can see the drastic extremes that are showing up in the world. And traditionally, traditional media will tend to report only on the negative or the fear-based. Um, obviously, there is lots of alternative media that you can find, people reporting other sides of the story too. But this world of extremes that we're in right now, that we have been in for many years, it's been growing, it's been rising, it's been something that we're perhaps acclimatizing to. This dark versus light that we're seeing on the planet, it might be showing up in you and for you in your own personal journey. You might be getting in touch with some, yeah, some of these things that some of us will refer to as shadows or old wounds or old traumas or old patterns of behavior that are rising to the surface for you to look at them, to clear or move them in a new way. But equally, your life itself might be bringing these dark versus light battles to you. It might be that you're supporting someone in your life who's going through one of these right now, where there is an energy of fight or war playing out for them, or you yourself might find yourself in that. You might find yourself rising in a way that you're either not proud of, or perhaps you have a reaction to something and then you step back for a second and go, oh, hang on a second, that was, that was my ego, or that was my fire, or that was my anger. I need to apologize to that person. I need to just take a moment and see what happened. There's a lot of that contentious energy in the air, and it's being fed and pumped globally in certain ways. But what we have to remember is that we the people have an incredible power in us to bring our hearts, our light, our love to the world in greater measure, especially at times like these where they're needed more than ever. So the world of extremes that we are in and a lot of the what we're seeing as dark versus light battle playing out on Earth, it is bringing global and personal healing with it. It's not always as easy to see that when you're in it. So for example, if you're in a stressful or difficult situation with somebody, at the moment you're going through it, you might only be able to feel and perceive the challenge of it. But there will be a reason that it's playing out. And one of the things that we've talked about a lot in these energy updates over the last few years is ancestral healing. 
So we are literally at a time on the planet where old consciousness, old human consciousness is meeting future human consciousness. Something that is more connected to our place in the universe, not just our programming as human beings and what we've been taught and fed and told to believe we are. Everything is opening around that. And so we find as that happens, there is a lot of battling and the old wants to hold on to the way things were. The new isn't quite sure of its place yet or doesn't know how to develop, how to grow. So fights often begin because of fears of safety, uh, the idea of trying to hold on to what you previously knew. So the world of extremes, when that is flaring, can bring up for you a certain level of lack of safety, lack of certainty, really unsure of your direction. And when this starts to arise in you, can you take a moment to sit with those feelings and wonder where they came from? Wonder what part of your history has got you into this place. And one of the things I often do is I remind myself how throughout history, every single generation has gone through its stress moments, its stress areas, its fears of what's happening to the world. And if we can come back to the smaller self, then we can really start to operate from not only inside who we are, but what's our immediate world. Uh, we had a team meeting this morning and one of our team members um, said, I can't remember exactly what their words were, but it was focus on your address, meaning where you live. When the world gets overwhelming, when what's going on outside you is so big that you can't quite deal with it or fathom it or grapple with it, can you focus on what's going on in, in your home, in your house, in your local area, with your local community to kind of bring it to a smaller place? Now, equally, some of you will be using the energy of the world of extremes to rise in power. So the world of extremes isn't necessarily just something that gets inflicted upon us. Some of you will be being challenged in a way that you will rise in power in yourself to be sovereign to who you are. And that will actually be the thing that shifts this dark versus light battle that you might see outside you or that you might find yourself in. So. The world of extremes is not necessarily the most balanced or steady place to be, but it's not without its potentials and it's not without its ways of helping you find your strength and your power. Last uh, month in March, I said that one of the themes for March was going to be new levels of self-trust. And we really have to trust ourselves when things around us seem more extreme than usual or more polarized than usual. We have to come back to who we are. So it's a big theme, the world of extremes, and it has many different ways of showing up for each of us individually. But even though it might not be a desired energy that you are facing or looking at, our growth, our healing, and a shift in terms of our ancestral patterns is, is what we're all undergoing at the moment. So. Hold, hold tight and hold steady if you are experiencing in a very visceral way the world of extremes. The second theme this month is the soul is sovereign. The soul is sovereign. So the soul is really important and many of us were not educated to the fact that we are a soul when we were younger and we're also at this time in history where with the rapid rise of technology and all the talk and examples of AI now infiltrating the world and also a lot of focus on robotic technology coming down the pike. It's really important and more important than ever that we remember that our human soul and our ability to connect with each other, support each other and the incredible energy that our soul brings to the planet, it's really important. It's going to be ever more important in the future as the world becomes a little more mixed in terms of what is soul and what is technology. So there will be many of us right now who are deepening with our souls in a way that we never have before. So you might be finding yourself becoming more aware of who you are, more connected to the ethers, more connected to energy around you, becoming more intuitive. Perhaps you have this rise in heart and compassion and what's going on in the world or around you in your community right now makes you go, I'm going to stand for this and I'm going to be 
somebody who wants to bring my energy to support this. So even though I understand and I also have my own moments around this, when you see a lot of what's going on in the world, a lot of the advancement around technology, it doesn't all look conscious at all. It doesn't all look like it's for necessarily the betterment of humanity or a better world. And so as we go through the coming years and decades, there is going to be an increasing focus on the importance of the human soul and the wisdom of the human soul. And so the soul is sovereign, is both a message about what we're facing in society right now, but it's also an important focus for you to remember who are you as a soul and why are you here and what did you come here to be a vessel and an ambassador of. And many of you will be moving into that stewardship now. I, I've met many people lately who are turning to become practitioners of different modalities, whether it's you know turning to be a sound healer or a yoga teacher or a therapist or there is a big movement of people who are now beginning to want to in a way support the soul of humanity and so many of you will be be getting activated into those kinds of roles those kinds of jobs that kind of work that values the soul of humanity rather than devalues the soul of humanity so it's an access point that we're that we're at right now and many of you will be beginning to take your place to be an ambassador of soul on earth um, Theme number three, this is one that has come up many times over the years. Um, whenever it does come up, uh, I always take it as a sign that we're either going to see a rise of these experiences this month or it's going to be increasingly important. Community is gold. Community is gold. So the people you love, the people you interact with and the strangers that you meet on any given day, our ability to connect with each other is pretty extraordinary when you stop and think about it. I'm always blown away by the connections I have with supposed strangers, people I've never met before, but boom, there are those connections. And so community is going to be in an elevating phase in April. So that means this is a really good time to connect with like-minded or like-hearted individuals. And of course, we tend to be attracted to people who are different to us. So sure, there might be some ways you're like-minded or some ways you're like-hearted, but we're most interested in expanding ourselves through connection and having an expanded view of the world through having a friend who perhaps takes things a lot less seriously than you do. So you go out with them and you see the world differently and they open you up to that and vice versa. Perhaps you help them with seeing things slightly more seriously or, or whatever it is. So community is gold and is in an elevating phase. I know because of what we've experienced since 2020 on the planet, there was a lot of separation for us in our communities and we really need each other to progress. And there are people who come into your life for a period of time and they're so important. They're no less important than the person that you've had for 30, 40, 50 years in your life. Some of those more seasonal friendships, business partnerships, lovers, romances, whatever they are, they're so important. And right now, if you are missing community, this is the time to put some energy towards gathering another friend or two or three. Um, but also you might find if you stay open, it's easier to connect with like-minded and like-hearted people than it was before. That's partly because people in general are a bit more open and of course, you won't magnetize the ones who are closed. I mean, you might if there's a lesson in it for you or a learning, but you will magnetize the ones who also want to be open and connected. So if hearing community is gold, lights you up, great, go for it. This is a really good month to connect with community. If hearing community is gold brings you some kind of pain or you hear me say that and it disappoints you or you feel sad, this is the time for you to look at creating more community and maybe you need to do a little digging as to why you're so isolated or how did you get into this isolated place or have you always been isolated all your life and now that is no longer feeling true for you. We need each other, we help each other, we support each other, we uplift each other. So put your community in focus if you feel like you need to increase community, bring in some new people, improve some of your relationships because it's in an elevating phase during the month of April. 
The fourth theme goes back to one from March. So in March, I gave a theme that talked about jagged energetics. Now this can be seen as the storm of transformation, just how choppy the energetic waters are on Earth. Um, well, jagged energetics moves into a healing phase is the message for April. So following on from these jagged energetics that I said were going to characterize March and a couple of months afterwards, it's moving into a healing phase. So if you have been going through some jagged times, whether they're difficult circumstances in your life for several months or your nervous system has been struggling with the world or experiences you're having for a few weeks or months, however long it's been, you will find that you will start to go into more of a healing phase this month, especially for some reason beginning in week three of April. So by week three of April, we'll start to go into a slightly more healing phase for those of you who have been pushed through it lately. Um, and that's going to link to my next theme, which is grace heals fire. This is the arrival of grace after trials and challenges. Um, I'm going to come back to a different theme in a second, but grace heals fire, the arrival of grace after trials and challenges. So it's interesting because when I tuned in on April, I was given two words, grace and fire, which you would think are completely opposed. You know, the energy of grace brings soothing, healing, space, openness, the energy of fire, while it can warm us and can be a fire that we need to bring life to us, it can also be an energy that annihilates, that burns, that, that tears through everything. So grace and fire to me are very much like the world of extremes, the light and the dark. But grace heals fire was given to me as a separate theme this month. And yet to me, it really parallels jagged energetics moving into a healing phase. So this theme is speaking to if you've had a lot of trials and challenges lately, there is going to be grace moving in this month. Don't forget to, uh, you know, use your positive affirmations, intend for the best and highest outcome. If you are going through it, ask yourself, what is it that this experience is going to give me on the other side or show me on the other side? Or what is the healing that's going on here, because there will be a grace energy that will be available and present in April. And as I'm saying this, I get this image of a group of you who are just exhausted and, and have kind of had enough and can't take any more. So if you are at that point, the energy is going to turn. And for some reason, the second half of April, even though I also see the second half of April containing a lot of fire in many ways, it is this duality of, yes, there will be fire, but there will also be this incredible healing grace energy. Again, this light and dark clashing. There is this, uh, this clashing jagged energetic energy that we're all finding our way through or finding ourselves in from moment to moment or supporting others who are going through it. The next theme, and this is a theme I actually taught on uh, last week in my members community, The Portal, navigating transitions, navigating transitions. So I have a members community and there are several thousand people in there. And so every month I get to look at all the questions that the community is asking. And one of the biggest themes that's coming up for people is navigating transitions, whether it's moving home, changing relationship, leaving a job that you've had forever, or on a purely energetic level, your identity is shifting in ways that you didn't anticipate. Perhaps you are having a very spiritual awakening after being what you might call a more grounded, practical person until now. And all of a sudden, the roof has come off and the lights are blinding you and you aren't seeing reality the way that you used to anymore. So navigating transitions is a theme that all of us are going through because we're in a very transitioning world. We're in a world that is quite rapidly going through a transitory phase. So this affects us on personal levels as well as global levels. So if you think you're just watching what's going on in the outside world and you're overwhelmed by it, you aren't separate from it. It's affecting us. Equally, you might be not looking at what's going on in the wider world and focusing on your own address, your own home, but you're going through big transitions. So 
One of the themes with navigating transitions is to try and remember that the uncertainty of a transition, the unknown of a transition, the foreign landscape you find yourself in when something very big has changed in your life, it allows for creativity and it allows for birth. So the ending is also a beginning that you can't yet see, that you haven't yet got to. There might be grief and letting go involved in the ending that you have to continue to work through the layers of. So in the portal last week, I was teaching a few different principles on how to navigate a transition and gave everyone an energy checklist on what to remember when you're going through it. And a few of those things were things like acknowledge, acknowledge that you're going through it. Don't minimize what you're going through. Don't bypass what you're going through. Acknowledge I'm going through a tough time. And that doesn't mean I have to constantly tell myself I'm going through a tough time, but I do have to remember that I'm going through a time that is asking a lot of me. And if I forget that for too long, I might make choices or do things that aren't going to serve me when I'm in a more sensitive space. Support from friends and your community. Who are the people who can support you that you can reach out to? Perhaps it's professional help that needs to help support you. Supporting yourself, making sure you're choosing the right kinds of environments and situations as you go through this. There was a whole list of these things, but I wanted to just touch on the idea that many, 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 many people right now are navigating enormous transitions in their personal life. And that's because we as a world are navigating a global massive transition. So try and remember that the uncertainty of those transitions is actually allowing for creativity and birth in the future. And each of your endings is representing the new beginning that you perhaps can't yet see or haven't yet moved into. The last couple of themes for this month are remember who you are when tested and the power of the pause. So firstly, remember who you are when tested. You can trust yourself. People, when they are triggered or when they are dealing with a lot, can behave in ways that are less rational, perhaps more irrational, perhaps more aggressive, perhaps more reactive. And there might be a part of you that doesn't quite understand what they're doing or why they're doing it or why they're behaving that way. Remember who you are when you're tested. Because this might even come from your closest loved one, that they do something that you're, you're kind of surprised. You can trust yourself. So even if people around you or the world around you seem more confusing than ever. Remember who you are when you're tested and remember to stick to what your values are, why you're here right now, what you think you are capable of doing right now on earth. It's interesting. This theme to me is, is one that I suspect I will understand a bit more as we go through this month, but remember who you are when tested is the solution to being tested by others, by situations in your life. There might be some real curveball things that have either happened to you recently or are happening to you right now. You know who you are. And sure, the curveball might slightly change how you operate in the future or how you do things, but you do know who you are. So trust yourself. If you really sit with any scenario that you are in and ask yourself, what can I do next in this situation and what is true for me to do, you will find what to do next. And that's all we can do. And this links to the next theme, which is the power of the pause. If uncertain, allow things to play out further before making hasty moves. As you will reach certainty, once you are clear about the energy of the storm. So I just said, remember who you are, trust yourself. That might take some time. You know, you might not be able to do that immediately on the day that you feel like you need to remember who you are in order to know what to do or how to respond or how to behave. The power of the pause is a reminder that if we're uncertain, wait, take a breath. Don't necessarily send the email. Don't necessarily say the thing. Don't necessarily do the thing. If you feel sure about that and you feel like, yeah, I know who I am and I know what I need to do next, great, go for it. 
But if there's any hesitation, because we're in such a stormy time, just wait. Because you will reach certainty once you go through a few more layers of the storm. So the power of the pause is always a good thing to remember. I have a very close friend who is also an intuitive, and she always asks the universe to see a sign three times. If the universe sends her a sign or a message that she has to do something, she'll ask for two more, two more examples. And that's her way of testing. Uh, for me, it's that I always have to make sure my body is ready to make a move because my body is housing all of my human isms and schisms. So no matter how powerful my intuition or my soul voice is, unless my body is able to alchemize or walk into today, what this is telling me I need to walk into, I'm not ready. I'm not there yet. And so I can either find the support that will get me ready or I can pause and I can go, I know where I need to go, but it's not today. It might be Thursday. It might be Friday. It might be Saturday. I'll keep checking. So the power of the pause is a power indeed. Don't forget that in these stormy times, the last thing you want to do is make a hasty or an uncertain move. You definitely want to wait until you see a calm spot on the ocean before you dive in. So I hope something in today's energy update has helped you or assisted you in some way. And you know, it's pretty choppy out there. It really is. So do look after yourself first and foremost. How are we self-caring? How are we self-soothing? How are we self-healing? These are really important for those of us who have a certain sensitivity that's awake on the planet. So do take good care of yourself. Um, thank you all for the amazing response to our big love tour. Myself and Davor Bozik are doing eight dates across North America. Um, three of the dates are now completely sold out and Los Angeles and Austin are very close to selling out. We only have a handful of tickets for each of those venues. And the tour is taking place in the second half of June. We do still have tickets available too for Seattle and for um, Boulder and for New York. So if you want to be live in the room, the Big Love Tour is gonna to be an evening of uh, intuitive guidance, channeling and music. So we can't wait to be with you in person. It's been too long. Um, this month in the portal, the audio that I have created for members is, is called the Reconnect Meditations. If you aren't a portal member, you can purchase these separately in the store. Uh, but this month they're focused on peace, self-love, abundance and heart. And I wanted to create five minute meditations, just five minutes, because I know how busy we all are. Uh, last month, the first four were offered. So this month, uh, members get the next four. And they're basically designed to just tap you into the energy of peace, self-love, abundance and heart uh, in a very quick and focused way. And they're supported by the music of Davor Bozik. And as I said, I teach every month inside the portal. I go deep with my members every month in my live with Lee and the Z's broadcast. I channel, I answer questions, and I look at what themes are circulating in the community and I offer a teaching on it. So this month just gone was navigating transitions. We'll see what April is. I will get a sense of that as we move through the month. And this month we also have Richard Rudd, a wonderful guest teacher, the creator and founder of The Gene Keys. Every month I bring a guest teacher into the portal to create something special for our community. Stephen Washington does a monthly Qigong sequence every month based on the energy themes from my energy updates. And then there's a whole host of other video and audio offering and, and a whole library in there. So if you want to go deeper with not just me and my work, but the people I bring along with me, the portal we've designed to be a sanctuary for sensitives but also a teaching space and a transformation space. And we're really proud of it. It's now in its 11th year. So if you wanna check out the portal, we'd love to see you in there. Uh, and we'll see you next month for the energy update. And hopefully I'll see some of you on the big love tour in North America in June. Take care, everyone. Hi everyone, if you are in North America or would like to travel to North America, we would love to see you on our Big Love Tour, which is taking place in June 2024. I'm bringing my musical partner Davor Bozik with me, so these special evening events will involve channeling, 
intuitive teaching which I will cater to every individual group on each night, questions and answers, and also music. We'll be bringing the songs that we have created over the last few years, but Duvall will also be playing his music while I channel a message from the Z's. It's amazing that I can connect with you through the power of technology, but you can't beat the feeling of being in the room together and the group energy that gets created by the community who come. So, from June the 12th to June the 29th, these are the cities we will be appearing in. Los Angeles, Boulder, Colorado, Austin, Asheville, New York, Toronto, Calgary, and Seattle. You can visit leeharrisenergy.com to reserve your tickets or use the link below. And some of the venues we do expect to sell out quite quickly, so please do reserve your seat. We can't wait to be with you and hope you can join us for the Big Love Talk.